welcome to our Youth Parliament, a joint initiative of the Times of India and Times Now. There has been a rigorous selection process behind getting the best of our youth, the most articulate youth, to represent their voice today. The idea of the Youth Parliament is very simple, to get the youth of this country into a direct, open conversation with the people who frame policies and the people who matter. There are three separate youth parliaments which have been organized by the Times of India and Times Now. One deals with politics, the other deals with economics, and the third will deal with foreign policy and strategic affairs. In this youth parliament, this is the way we've divided it. There are eight participants in all. There are four participants from what we call the establishment, those who are players in the present political environment. Uh, they may not necessarily be all politicians, but they already have a say in decision making. And then there are four youth participants who we hope, expect, and genuinely believe will be the future of India. These participants will take on the establishment across a motion which is decided uh, by the House. The motion we are putting up, and before I introduce our participants today, uh, let me welcome first uh, Shankar Raguraman, who is a co-moderator with me in this uh, special youth parliament. Shankar is a fantastic political analyst, number cruncher, and he's a senior editor for the Times of India. <coughs> Shankar, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we have eight participants today. The motion which we are putting to the floor is this. The political class of India has failed to meet the aspirations of India's youth. It's a straightforward motion. It will be not easy for those who are against the motion to have their say heard and their voice carried in this house, but they will have a full and equal opportunity as those who will be on the treasury benches of this particular debate. I will now introduce the members of our first youth par par uh, parliament. And uh, <clears throat> speaking for the motion is well-known social and political activist, former IPS officer, one of the best-known police officers this country has had, MagSese Award winner, Dr. Kiran Bedi. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> and speaking against the motion is uh, Mr. Sachin Pilot, uh, who's a union minister, and uh, today will face a tough time fighting this motion. Uh, Sachin, you have been grim through the initial part of the proceedings. I hope you will smile as the proceedings move on. All the very best. Sachin Pilot, one of the young leaders of the Congress Party. As they say, the, the youth brigade in the Congress Party squaring off with the youth of this country. This should be interesting. Let me introduce our, uh, our first panelist uh, who is speaking for the motion today, Ashay Sahai. He will be speaking at number five, and I'll give the numbers as we move on. Ashay Sahai is a 24-year-old, and he is from uh, the Rashtriya Vidyalaya College of Engineering in Bangalore, and he's speaking for the motion. Ashay Sahai, look forward to your participation. Let's give a big round to our youth panelists. And also speaking against the motion today is uh, Fawaz Shaheen, and Fawaz is 22 years old. He's from the Aligarh Muslim University, and he is defending the political class today, which is a brave thing to do, Fawaz, let me tell you. All the very best. As they used to say when I was in college and debating, Fawaz, there is no better challenge than defending the indefensible, but please do not feel that I have any bias towards this subject. <laughs> we have absolute confidence. Thank you very much. And uh, somebody who we all know we have respect, great respect for, a person who uh, cephology has lost to the political space. Uh, Dr. Yogendra Singh Yadav of the Aam Aadmi Party is speaking for the motion today. He, has, he is a present day politician. He's a present day politician who has no qualms in saying that the political class which he is a part of today has failed to meet the aspirations of India's youth. Yogendra Yadav, all the very best to you. <clears throat> Now, speaking against the motion today is uh, from our youth panelist is Vipul Nanda. And he's 26 years old. Vipul is from the National Law School of India University in Bangalore. And Vipul, we hope you'll bring both legal and political insights into this debate. Look forward to hearing from you, Vipul. Excellent. Let's have a good debate today. Let's have an open debate. And I'd like the audience to be as participative as possible in the course of uh, our debate today. Now, we also have today uh, speaking 
uh, for the motion. We have Ashwin, and Ashwin is from, he's 20 year old. Let's give him a big round of applause because he's the youngest of our participants today. All of 20 years old. From Loyola College, Chennai, I wish you the best, Ashwin. May the youngest and the best voice win. And don't think I'm biased again. I'm equally biased on both sides. At least this time it's on my side. Yeah, well, sir. <laughs> it's fantastic to be on the side of, of India's youth. And uh, <clears throat> last but not the least, Harsimrat Kaur Badal is one of the younger members of parliament of our Lok Sabha, and those who've heard her speak representing the Shiromani Akali Dal would know she is by far one of the most articulate, and if I may say so, uh, Ms. Badal, you're also one of the most aggressive speakers, so you will have to bring all your aggression to use today to speak against the motion. Harsimrat Kaur Badal, member of parliament for the Shiromani Akali Dal. Introductions done? Well, now that the introductions are done, I'll just spend a very little time going through uh, the way we'll format the debate. And I believe that the best debate is unstructured, uh, but we'll bring a little format to it so that before we go into the open debate round, we'll have a little format. The format is very simple. Each of our initial participants, and we'll go in a specific order with a youth participating speaking, participant speaking for the motion, youth participant speaking against the motion, and then for and against and for and against, uh, we will have eight speakers come on. <clears throat> I will not reveal who's coming on when, so that there is an element of surprise when someone is asked to speak. <clears throat> Just three things without trying to sound pedantic or preachy. Freshness in a debate is important. Uh, we hope that uh, participants will be responding to each other rather than just prepare, reading from what they have prepared. Interjections will be fantastic and welcome and appreciated. Uh, seeking of clarifications to specific points which one speaker or the other has articulated will add to the quality of the debate. And Shankar, if you'd like to add any before we begin the round. Shankar. I just hope that we don't have to periodically get up and say we are on our feet, <laughs> <laughs> as tends to happen in Parliament very often. <coughs> and to the youth participants here, I would say this is your chance. This is your chance to come up against the very best people who've been chosen by lakhs to be where they are. So, go for it. Make Our first the most speaker. Of Fantastic. Our first speaker <clears throat> who is introducing the motion that the political class of India has failed to meet the aspirations of India's youth will be Ashwin from Loyola College, Chennai. Three minutes for your opening remarks. Ashwin, floor is yours. So, uh, the motion before the House is the Indian political class has failed to meet the aspirations of the youth. Now, uh, to start with, I concede to the fact that polit politics as such is a very difficult arena to enter. Not everybody shine in it, right? And in no way am I demeaning the stature of politics. But what I'm arguing for is that politics, the, states, the status of which has been demeaned, this, this sacred stance, this sacred activity has been demeaned, demeaned by the existing politicians. Right? Now, uh, before I go about and explain what aspirations have failed, I'll describe what these aspirations are in the first place. Now, there is a varied aspiration across the country because a, a, a student studying in Bihar might just have the aspiration to find his next meal on the table, while I, a middle class, might just want to buy, a, buy myself a car after I start working. But uh, on the other hand, there is this upper class elite student who's just graduated, wants to go to Oxford for his further studies. So that apart, the difference in aspirations apart, there are a few basic things which I call the least common denominator that should be addressed to in the first place, right? This includes education, this includes employment, and this includes dignity of life. Now, education, we all know the importance of education. If there is some way we can improve our stature and contribute best to the surroundings around us and the country as such, education is the only way out. It's an investment that reaps benefits all through the nation, and this is a common known fact. Employment. Now, employment is something that, the, that should be on the top of agenda of the government, because considering the amount of, empl uh, amount of working people that we have in our country, this is a demographic dividend, right? 60 million people are below the age group of 40. Now, employment should be on top of the government's agenda is what I'm arguing for. Dignity of life. Now, we see that a lot of people are discriminated at their workplaces, irrespective of their qualification, right? If I am someone from the Dalit class and I'm working in an MNC, which we are not seeing today, I will still be assumed to have an inferior status. Now, why this inferior status at all in the first place, right? Now, to talk about the failures in these aspects of education, employment, and dignity of life, where has education got in the country? One out of every four people is 
uneducated in this country. I'm pretty sure people in this room are ignored. Second, employment. Now, uh, now my brother has finished his class 10 and he finished, he studied his diploma and he studied further for six years because he did not find a job opportunity until then. But now he's, uh, he's, he's serving burgers at McDonald's. Now he studied, he, studied engineer, he studied engineering only so that he could use this talent of his, this knowledge of his to something that could be of a related sector. But now I'm not, I'm not demeaning the status of someone who serves burgers at, a McDo at, at McDonald's. It's <coughs> as prestigious as someone who works in the construction. But what did my brother study for in the first place? So this skill set mismatch is something that is very implorable in our, con in, in our country. Right? Now where is dignity? Now we see a lot of discrimination within the workplace. Women are treated inferior to men. Now with all due respect to everyone around there who have equal respect for gender, let me ask you, what is the scene of women in the country today, right? So, now, that, now, now the problem in the political class is dealing with these aspirations, but the first step is identifying these aspirations. Once you do not, only if you identify these aspirations, can you deal with them. But the political class's failure in identifying these aspirations is where they're flawed in the first place. Now, now why, uh, why haven't they been able to identify? The average age of an Indian is 23 years old today. The average age of a cabinet minister is 65. This jarring gap of 42 <coughs> years is enough to tell you about the differences in what we expect out of the system and, difference, and, and what the system is giving to us, if anything is given to us at all. Right? Now, ordinance, this, the recent scene of criminalization in politics has gotten uh, much light to. Now, let me ask the government as to on what grounds did they decide, did they dare to go up and pose an ordinance in the first place? Now, this is a clearly one-sided debate, right? Because we don't see any defense in defending this ordinance, right? Why didn't, why didn't the government pass an ordinance for the John Lokpal bill? Why didn't the government pass an ordinance for the women's rights bill? Now, this, this clearly shows that the loyalty to their political class is overtaking our representation in the parliament. And this demographic dividend that I'm talking about, 60% of the population being below the working age group of 40, might just end up as a demographic disaster. If we do not tap the talent of today's youth, which is the, which is the biggest talent that exists today, I think we will be regretting 50 years down the line. We will not be able to correct this. Now today, the, the, the onus on the government is to identify the, the, the ability to churn this huge population as a dividend and not end up as a disaster. Thus, I rest my case. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much. <clears throat> it's a great opening comment, Ashwin. Well done. Thank you very much. Now, more than 50% of Indians are below uh, 35 years of age. And uh, the other interesting statistic I find is that 74% of uh, politicians who have criminal backgrounds get the tickets back again by their parties. So they are put in the fray once again. I think that tells a lot. And as you have said, statistics do reveal a lot sometimes. Thanks very much. Fawaz Shaheen is our next speaker. We are getting youth speakers from both sides, and he's from Aligarh Muslim University speaking against the motion. Fawaz, the floor is yours. You can respond to Ashwin on any of the points he's made. Thank you, Anup. Uh, 